Good morning, Jerusalem. of JBC a happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a great and blessed day. I have a few announcements to bring to your attention to the missionary ministry. God used your kindness to remind me of his faithfulness. Thanking God for you. Thank you from Sister Larita Johnson. For those that are interested with working on the new window project for the North Sanctuary, you can contact Deacon Marshall Wright at 804 310-7410. Join us for the second drive-in movie night sponsored by the Christian Education Ministry and the Women's Day Committee. Come enjoy the movie Hidden Figures this Friday night from 7.15 p.m. to 7.45 p.m., which are the parking lot entrance times. The movie will begin at 7.55 p.m., at which time the parking lot will be closed. Join us for this year's Women's Day celebration on, on next Sunday during our parking lot service. Our guest preacher will be Reverend Angela Lewis and music provided by the LSC Johnson Inspirational Choir from Mount Carmel Baptist Church. This year's theme is your calling from Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Gentle reminder that each woman of JBC is asked to contribute $100 towards Women's Day or as you can afford. We look forward to seeing you there next Sunday in your pastel colors. This Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m., we will continue with our virtual Bible study via Zoom with Reverend James Prelo. A link to join will be provided in advance. Thank you for your time and attention. We will now be blessed with a couple selections from today's praise team, followed by a message from our guest minister, Reverend James Prelo. Have a wonderful Mother's Day, ladies. JBC, continue to remain safe. Stay blessed, stay encouraged, and have a wonderful upcoming week. Thank you.
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, dear Lord. We want to thank you for this day, dear Lord. We want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to another brand new day, dear Lord, to worship you, Lord. To worship you in spirit and in truth, dear Lord. For you have given us so much that we don't even deserve. So, dear Lord, we're going to say,
communicate because sometimes I can be sometimes I am a little technically disadvantaged well good morning Jerusalem and happy Mother's Day happy Mother's Day to all of the the queens that are out here the queen of your castle the queen of your children whether your children are birthed adopted or they just flock around you Happy Mother's Day to all of the women that have an impact on someone, whether it is a child or an adult. Happy Mother's Day to the mothers that take on young mothers and teach them how to be good mothers. We bless you, we praise you, not just on today, but we celebrate you every day. I want to thank you all for allowing us to bring God into your house, your automobile, or wherever you may be viewing or listening to this service. Father, I thank you right now for another opportunity to come and preach your word. Lord, I ask that as I stand here that you hide me behind the cross so that they can see and hear you and not me. I ask that you allow me to preach a word that will be relevant and on time. And that you will allow your word to go forth, prick the hearts of your people, and remove anything that's not like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I would like to call your attention to the first book of the Bible, Genesis, uh, the 29th chapter. Uh, we're going to be looking at verses 31 through 35. 
but I'm going to focus on verse 35, just a, a portion of verse 35. And that portion says, uh, this time I will praise the Lord. This time I will praise the Lord. I'd like to use for a subject this morning, this time. In the movie Diary of Mad Black Woman, Helen, played by Kimberly Elise Neal, has been married to her husband Charles McCarter, played by Steve Harris, for 18 years. On the evening of their anniversary, Helen arrives home to find all of her belongings in a U-Haul truck parked out front. As she goes into the house and walks in her closet, she sees all of these nice new clothes and becomes excited as she believes all of these things are for her. As we go a little further in the scene, Charles walks in with his new boot and informs Helen that those are not for you and you need to leave as all of your things are in the U-Haul truck parked out front with Orlando, played by Shamar Moore, waiting to take you wherever you want to go. Helen believes that she is owed more than Charles is giving her, so an argument ensues and she ends up being dragged out of the house. Just as in a game of spades, life has a funny way of dealing us bad hands. Sometimes game after game. It may not be the exact same hand, but at times the hands are somewhat similar. When we are faced with these situations, it is up to us to figure out what we must do to win with a bad hand. After all, if you really know how to play spades and your partner has a good hand and you trust them, you can win with a bad hand. Some of us encounter situations in life that we caused due to decisions that we have made while others have to deal with the vicissitudes of life due to decisions others have made. In either case, sometimes we are faced with decisions we never thought we would have to make or live under conditions that we know are beneath us. Life has a way of throwing us curveballs. When we are expecting a slow, straight pitch, at times when this happens, our reaction time is slower than it would be if only we knew what was coming our way. Therefore, we end up in situations that we never saw coming, and most of those times we have no idea how to escape. Many of you assembled under the sound of my voice can attest to being in situations similar to what I just described in the past. But if we really be honest with ourselves this morning, some of us are still in similar situations right now, but are too proud or embarrassed to admit it or ask for help. Everyone goes through tough times. However, some people find it very hard to ask for help. The root cause of this varies from about varies, but the consequences are the same. Without assistance, you can get stuck and can't move forward. Some people have a hard time asking for help because to them it shows weakness. Others lack the necessary social skills to do so or don't know who to turn to. Many people believe that it's wrong to waste another person's time by asking them for assistance or asking them to listen. On the other hand, they may believe that other people have much better things to do than deal with their problems. Thus, we end up facing these problems alone. Some people even prefer to fail. There are some who are so used to failing that they fail to realize that there is an alternative. Failing to realize or seek an alternative, these people never get to the point 
where they say to themselves, this time I will do better. This time I will not fail. This time I will be a victor and not a victim. Join me in the text as we see Jacob the trickster had one pulled over him, on him by his uncle Laban. Under the advice of his father, Jacob traveled to the land and to the household of his uncle Laban to find a wife. As he was at the well, Rachel showed up with her father's flock. And when Jacob realized who she was, he kissed her, then introduced himself. He kissed her, then introduced himself. Hmm. Brothers, let me tell you one thing. Do not try that today. Because she may have you leaving wishing that you never did that. If you walk up on the wrong sister, she will make you regret that real quick. But now that she realizes that he's family, she runs and tells her father, Laban, who in turn runs to meet Jacob. Soon after, Laban invites Jacob to stay with him, and the two of them work out an agreement in which Jacob agrees to work for Laban for seven years in exchange for the hand of Rachel in marriage. Well, Jacob is so much in love, and after these seven years, these seven years go by so quick that it seems like just a few days. He then approaches Laban and says, all right, I have worked my seven years, and now I am ready to receive my bride. Well, Laban planned an elaborate wedding with guests and a feast, but when it was time for Jacob to receive his bride, Laban tricked him and gave him Leah instead of Rachel. Have you ever worked so hard and long for one thing only to be given something else that you did not even want or desire? But imagine how Leah must have felt. Here, she's the older of the two sisters, knowing that Rachel cannot be given in marriage until she is given in marriage first. Imagine how she must have felt knowing that she was being given to a man who didn't even love her. Imagine how Leah must have felt knowing that the man that she was being given to was in love with someone else, her baby sister. Imagine how Leah must have felt knowing that in order to be given in marriage, her father had to trick the groom into thinking that she was someone else. Have you ever felt like you were the okie doke Like you were the prize that no one wanted? It was almost like Jacob opened that old Cracker Jack box expecting to get that temporary tattoo, but instead he got the plastic ring. It was almost like going on a blind date only because your parents would not let your sister go by herself. Have you ever felt left out, looked over, or rejected? It can be clear that Jacob's negative reaction to waking up with Leah as his bride and not his desired pick, Rachel, was taken by Leah as a flashing sign of rejection. To be fair, it was Laban that is to blame for this wife, spot, this wife swap. But I know as well as you do that Leah felt as if she was the okie doke. In the scripture, Leah is first described as having weak eyes, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. I don't know about you, but if the only adjective used to describe me in a story was that I had weak eyes, I wouldn't feel good about myself. I'd be feeling some type of way. Even today, we still tend to prioritize the qualities we notice about ourselves or others on physical characteristics first. 
Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is, the, which is of great worth in God's sight, as referred to in 1 Peter 3, verses 3 and 4. This verse reminds me that what God sees as greater worth to the kingdom is not the outward beauty, but the heart within. We should like to take care of ourselves and know that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. We should also know that our body and physical strength will fade with time. As we will notice as this story unfolds, the sister with the more outward adornment isn't as strong on the inside as she hoped. So what can we take away from this, from this story? Security only found in an outward appearance with no internal strength of faith and endurance will not last in a good fight. God makes no mistakes and although our human eyes will find pleasure in one person more than another, we must not bank on attractiveness to be all that we stand on or all that we stand for. In spite of the favoritism that Jacob showed Rachel, God saw the pain and suffering of Leah and he cared for her. On the basis of what happened next, it seems that Leah turned to the Lord for help that she spent more time in prayer, asking God to help her through the pain and through the suffering. And God answered her prayer. He opened her womb and she bore four sons in rapid succession. It is through prayer that we have the opportunity to bring our will into line with God's plan and not try to change his mind. Prayer helps us better understand the mind of God. Prayer is our opportunity to demonstrate our trust in God. Prayer is speaking with God and being confident that God hears us. Sometimes we think that God will not hear our prayers because either in our minds or because someone else told us we have fallen short of his glory. But if we trust Christ for salvation, he has forgiven us and will listen to us. When we feel as though our prayers are bouncing off of the ceiling, remember that as a believer, we have been set apart by God and he loves you. He hears and answers, although his answers may not be what you expect. Look at your problems in the light of God's power instead of looking at God in the shadow of your problems. And know that he may not come when you want him, but you'll want him when he comes. First, Leah bore Reuben, which means see a son. Note what, the, note what she said about the baby's birth. The Lord has seen my suffering and met my needs. And she would not be a, she would and she would not be able to please Jacob by, by giving him a son. Surely Jacob would love her because of the son. And apparently Jacob did give her more attention, at least more than before, because Leah bore three more sons in rapid succession. She bore Simeon, which means hearing. Why this name? because she had been praying about Jacob's neglect and rejection to the Lord, and the Lord heard her prayer. Next, she bore Levi, which means attached. She now felt sure that her husband would become more attached to her because, he, because she had given him, at this point, three sons. Then came Judah, which means praise. Why this name? Probably because Jacob had begun to love Leah and give her more attention than before. However, it could be that Leah had learned not to focus upon her husband, but on the Lord. That is, she was no longer trying to win Jacob's love by bearing children. Rather, she was just praising God for giving her children. The focus was no longer on her problem, but upon the Lord. She was simply praising God for who he was 
and for what he had done for her. She would say, this time, I'm going to fix my focus on the Lord because he heard my cry. This time, I will give God thanks for hearing me, my cry and answering my prayer. This time, I'm going to praise the Lord for all that he has done in spite of the ridicule I have endured from my husband and my own sister. This is really how we should approach life with a this time praise. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, who knows where we would be right now. We need to approach life with a this time praise for all of the mountains that he's brought us over and for all of the valleys that he has seen us through. We need to approach life with a this time praise because we know not think, but we know that for those who love the Lord, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. We should approach life with a this time praise because when all around us is against us, God promised never to leave us or forsake us. That's why we should continue to be strong, mama. Continue to be courageous, my sisters, because God will take care of you through every day all the way. God will take care of you. In spite of the negative ways we may look at ourselves or others may look at us, there are some who may be envious of us because uh, back then they didn't want me. Now they all over me. Now they see who God has made me to be. Now they see the seed that has blossomed that God planted inside of me. Back then all they saw was just a, a dried up little seed that really didn't mean nothing, didn't look like nothing. But now that I have spent some time with God, you know sometimes they say well, when couples are married for like 50, 60 some years, they start to look alike, they start to talk alike. One of them might say something and the other one finishes their sentence. Well, let me tell you something, baby Baba, when you spend time with God, the more time you spend with God, the more you will be like him, the more you will speak like him. Because when you spend time with God, it allows God to nourish what he has planted inside of you. So back then when they saw you, when you didn't know God, they didn't want you. But right now they all over you because you got God all over you and you're doing great things. You're doing things that they never expected you to do. You're doing things that they never thought you could do. You're doing things that people never thought you were able to do. You're doing things because you've been spending time with God. Although Rachel was Jacob's favorite wife, the line of David and ultimately the Messianic line passed through Leah and her son Judah. Not Rachel, the favorite wife. You may not be someone's favorite person, but that does not mean that God cannot or will not use you. You may have been looked over time after time after time, even on your job. I know we have all either experienced situations or we have seen situations where you have your go-to person and that go-to person deserved to get the promotion but instead of them giving that promotion to the go-to person, they gave it to their favorite person and they said that you are too valuable to get out of that position. But let me tell you something, I don't care how people treat you, they cannot block what God has for you. Whatever God has for you, no devil in hell can stop someone else from giving, from getting that, from, from you getting that from God. No door can be closed that God cannot open. I don't care what it is, if God's got it for you, it is for you. Although you may not all you although you may not be the chosen one, God can and still use you to accomplish his will. You may not have been the one that people chose, but 
but let me tell you something, God will still use you to complete the work that he has ordered. You see, if it had not been for, the, for Leah, we would not have David. If it had not been for Leah, we would not know that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If it had not been for Leah, we would not know that he makes me lie down in green pastures and leaves me beside still waters. If it had not been for Leah, we would not know that we have no reason to fear evil. If it had not been for Leah, we would not know that we have a table prepared for us. If it had not been for Leah, we would not know that goodness and mercy got our back. If it had not been for Leah, we would not know the Lord is our light and our salvation. If it had not been for Leah, we would not know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If it had not been for Leah, we would not know that God is our refuge and our strength. If it had not been for Leah, we would not know that we could lift up our eyes unto the hills where, where, uh, where cometh our strength. This time, a phrase that we all use often, when we realize the way we did something previously can be done better, or the route that we took was actually not as quick or as short as we thought it was. But maybe perhaps then we use the word this time when we, when we uh, dated someone in the past that was not who we thought they were. This time is a phrase we use when we intend to do something better than we did before. Have you ever felt like you were someone's second choice? Have you ever been looked down on and refused to even be acknowledged? Just because you looked or you may have possessed a feature that someone did not like. Have you ever felt like you were being used by someone so that they could get what it was that they really wanted? In spite of how she was treated by the person whose love she desired, Leah ended up being the mother of Judah, which means that when Matthew called the role on the genealogy of, G of Jesus, her son was able to respond here when they called his name. How many of you want to be able to respond here when they call your name? When they call your name, you ought to be able to shout, jump up, and scream to the top of your lungs. I'm right here. I may not have been chosen. I may not have even been liked by other people, but I'm here. I'm not back there where I used to be because thank God you didn't leave me where you found me. I'm right here. So here are some things that we can learn from Leah. First, people can compliment you, but they cannot validate you. Stop waiting for anyone outside of God to validate you. They can celebrate you. They can rejoice with you. They can give you their opinions but they can never validate you. Sometimes people can only see what is on the outside and they will never see what God has placed inside of you. Second, God made you so he knows what you are worth. Stop letting people devalue you by telling you what you can and cannot do. God made you with a purpose and anyone who cannot see or doesn't know that, it's not your fault that God made you so complicated. So stop minimizing who you were made to be just to make insecure people feel better about themselves. Third, your praise should not be determined by your situation or your circumstance. Don't let others stop you from praising the Lord. If they only had a clue of what you are going through or what the Lord has brought you out of, they would be praising God right beside you. If they knew what God delivered you from, if they knew about the abuse, if they knew about the addiction, if they knew what God freed you from, they would understand why you praise the Lord the way you do. Fourth, no matter what you may have been through or what you may be going through right now, you always should have a right now praise. 
Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. This psalm was written by Leah's great-great-grandson David when he was at the gates of, Philistine, of the Philistines and he was about to die. The Bible said that he pretended madness before, Kimelech, before King Abimelech and was freed from what could have killed him. Sometimes you need to break out in a crazy praise. It doesn't matter what somebody else says about you. Sometimes you need to praise God like you are about to lose your mind. Because if the truth be told, if it wasn't for God, you probably would have lost your mind. Sometimes we need to remember that what God brought us through, some people didn't quite make it through. So we need to look at the situations of other people and say, sometimes that could have been me, but if it wasn't for God, I'm going to praise him right now. I might be behind in my bills, but I'm going to praise him right now. I might be standing at the bus stop, but I'm going to praise him right now. I might be sitting in the car in the driveway that won't crank, but I'm going to praise him right now. I might be facing an eviction, but I'm going to praise him right now. My child might not even like me on Mother's Day, but I'm going to praise him right now. My child might not even tell me happy Mother's Day, happy birthday, happy Monday, but I'm going to praise him right now. We need to learn how to have a right now praise. Some of you have a right now praise built up on the inside of you, but because you are too embarrassed or too proud or think that somebody's going to talk about you, you won't let it out. But let me tell you one thing right now. If you have a right now praise on the inside of you, you need to let it out before the rocks cry out. You need to let it out before the trees cry out. You need to let it out before somebody, let me tell you something. Sunflowers have sense enough to raise their head when the sun comes out. And as the sun moves from one side to the other, sunflowers have sense enough to follow the sun and worship that sun that God provided so that they can get the light and the nourishment that they need. If you can't follow that, if you go down to Florida, you will see that there are some orange groves and the oranges have enough sense to raise their heads when the sun comes out and follow that sun and thank God for the sun that provides its life, that provides its nutrients. And I know a lot of you out here just like me like to eat oranges. And if it wasn't for the sun that nourished the oranges, we wouldn't have the vitamin C that we have. So if the, if the oranges have sense enough to raise their head, if the sunflowers have sense enough to raise their head, why do the people of God hesitate to praise God and thank Him for the things that He's brought us through, for the things that He's bringing us through. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the parking lot. Praise Him in your house. Praise Him wherever you are. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Sometimes we need to praise him like we've lost our minds. Sometimes we need to praise him like we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring or like there is going to be no tomorrow. Because let me tell you one thing. Some people, I get this from my wife, don't blame me for this. Some people going to wake up dead tomorrow. So if you woke up this morning and you were able to Breathe in, breathe out. If you woke up this morning and you were able to swing your legs over on the side of your bed, get up and take one step after the other, you ought to be able to praise the Lord. I know this ain't scripture, but sometimes we need to praise God like we won the lottery. Because truth be told, some of us, if we came into a large sum of money, we'd be missing for a few weeks because we'd be celebrating. So why can't we celebrate like that? For the goodness of the Lord. Now, for those of you who may not have seen Diary of a Mad Black Woman, let me not leave you hanging. At the end of the movie, Helen finds herself and realizes that she does not need a man to validate her worth because God has already done that for her. She is able to leave her past behind her 
and celebrate the future that God has in front of her. So my sisters and my brothers, before I get out of here today, let me leave you with a message from the late great poet laureate, Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tide. Just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes? Shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my heartiness offend you? Don't you take it off or hard? Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me down. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air, I rise. Look at your haters and tell them that you may not have chosen me, but God chose me. God chose me to be a light on the top of a hill in a very dark world. God chose me to be salvation to his people who have been looked over and underserved. God chose me to lead his people to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God chose me to go and teach all nations. God chose me to witness to the last, the least, and the lost. I may have disappointed people and messed up in the past, but this time, this time, they will know that I am the head and not the tail. This time, they will know that I am a lender and not a borrower. This time, they will know that I am a follower of Christ. This time, they will know that I am blessed. This time, they will know that I am healed. This time, they will know that I am set free. This time, they will know that I am delivered. This time, they will know that I am a new creation and the handiwork of God. This time they will know that when I am weak, my God is strong. This time they will know that I am a child of the King. This time they will know that I am a chosen race, a royal priesthood, and a, and a holy nation. Good morning, Jerusalem. May the Lord bless you real good. May he shine the light of his countenance upon you. But when trouble comes knocking at your door, why don't you have a little talk with Jesus? Tell him all about your troubles. He will hear your fans cry. He will answer by and by. You'll feel a little prayer wheel turning. No little fire burning. Have a little talk with Jesus. That'll make it right. Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? Say yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. This time, this time, this time, I will praise the Lord. This time, no matter what other people may say or try to do to me, this time, I will praise the Lord. Amen. For those of you who may be searching for a relationship with the Lord, for those of you who are tired of repeating the same things over and over, and you keep saying, this time I'm going to do better, but then you still fall into the same rut, there's a God who can lead you and help you on your next this time. Don't wait, hesitate, or vacillate because the Lord is waiting for you. If you're looking for him, he's not lost. He's right there. 
standing by, waiting for you. If you need prayer, if you want to connect with a church, I invite you to contact someone at Jerusalem Baptist Church in Dodgeville. You can reach us online at jbcministries.org or JBC Doswell on Facebook or by calling 804-876-3460. We would love to hear from you. We would love to hear how God is not only blessing you, but how God is using you to take his word to someone else. I'm not going to say the doors of the church are open. I'm going to take a line from one of my daughter's favorite songs. We're going to leave the door open. Because sometimes, you know, when I was a child and they said the doors of the church are open, my mind, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, well, if I don't go now, then they're going to close the door. And if I make up my mind after they close the door, I can't go. But right now, we're going to leave the door open. And in the virtual world that we are in, that is possible to leave the doors open and to be able to connect with the church anytime you want to. It doesn't matter what time of day, night, or morning it is. The beautiful thing about the virtual world is that you can get on your phone or your electronic device and get on that website and say, I need prayer. I want to hook up with a church that's going to walk with me while I am on my this time. I heard a comedian say a few years ago that I burned up my second chance 15 times ago. So it doesn't matter how many second chances you're on. God is a God of another chance. There's no limit on how many chances God will give you. There is no limit on the amount of this times that you can have. But this time, this time I am asking you, if you're serious about it, put your hand in God's hand. Contact the church. Someone will be glad to pray with you. Someone will be glad to walk you through the steps. If you're saved, I invite you to take Jesus to someone else. If you're not saved, I invite you to let him in your life. Let him in your heart. He's waiting. For you English teachers, please forgive me. He ain't going nowhere. He's right there. Waiting on you.